a warm welcome to all of you in this lecture number 2 of module 4 in our course processing of non metals in module number 4 our focus is on processing of plastics as we can recall in our lecture number 1 in module 4 we have seen that what are thermosets and thermoplastics basically we have tried to understand that what are the characteristics or important properties of thermosets and important properties of thermoplastics we have tried to understand or <coughs> go into the revision mode of what do we know about the plastics if you remember we have seen that plastics are the materials which can be easily molded or shaped plastics derive their name from a Greek word. So, basically we have tried to go into the history or into the brief overview of the plastics in our lecture number 1. And then we have seen that what are thermosets, what are thermoplastics, we have seen that what are the structures, different types of structures that are present in the plastics. We have seen a classification diagram in which we have seen that there are linear structure, it can be a branched structure, it can be a cross linked structure, it can be a network structure, different types of structures were seen. Then we have seen that what are the application areas, because once we talk of processing, so processing means converting the raw material into the final product. So, when we are converting the raw material into a particular product or a tangible product, it has to have some application for which the whole conversion process or the whole processing is being done. So, it has to have an objective that why the raw material is being converted into the final product. And if you remember that there are large variety and there is a huge application spectrum of thermosets as well as thermoplastics. We have also seen that what are the various types of thermosets, what are the various types types of thermoplastics and how they are differentiate, differentiated. If you remember we have seen that the thermosets cures irreversibly and the thermoplastics cures reversibly and how the curing takes place that also we have discussed in our lecture number 1. And finally, we ended the lecture 1 with a slide in which the different monomer units for different types of polymers were shown. So, these types of polymers we would be using as the raw material for converting them into the final product. So, in today's lecture our focus primarily would be on understanding that what are the various mechanical properties of the polymers and what are the important factors that govern the processing of polymer matrix compound sorry the plastics. Because first we understand that how the plastics are processed later on in our next module we would be focusing on the polymer matrix composites in which again the polymers would be processed and fibers would be or the reinforcement would be added into the polymers or the plastics to make a different class of engineering material. So, this particular discussion that we are having today is not only relevant for this particular module, this is relevant for the module to follow also. So, this is really important we should try to understand that what are the properties of the polymers and why we are incorporating these polymers with additional phase and what advantages we can derive if we incorporate additional phase into these polymers. But before combining them with any other material first we should be able to understand that what are the properties of the polymer itself or what are the mechanical properties of the polymer itself and how the polymer would behave. Then in today's lecture our focus would also be on one of the most simplest process of making the plastic products that is called casting. Casting is a very common word which is used for processing or manufacturing of or production of metals in which we use a casting process to get the desired products. But in plastics also we can get the desired shape of the product using the plastic as the raw material. So, we would be seeing a very simple diagram of the casting process specifically in context of the processing of plastics. So, let us start our lecture with this introduction and a brief review of what we have discussed in lecture number 1. So, first of all let us see the general behavior of polymer melts. Now, we see we know that the, there are different types of polymer thermosets and thermoplastics and they have to be converted into the desired shapes and sizes according to the requirement. Now, that when the polymer will melt 
how the polymer melt will behave or on what factors the polymer melt depends. On your screen you can see the general behavior of the polymer melts depends on the three factors. Now, this particular factors need to be considered when we are talking or when we plan to discuss any of the processing technique for plastics. One important point is the chemical structure of the individual micromolecule. So, in the previous lecture we have seen different types of structures are there. So, that is one important point and that was the important point to emphasize that why we are this our topic is processing, but why we are talking about the structure. Why? Because the structure would dictate the processing, because depending upon the type of the structure the particular processing process or processing technique would be applicable to a specific set of polymer family. So, important point first important point to note is the chemical structure of the individual micromolecules and that would vary for different types of polymers. So, the second point to note here is the development of a realistic fluid dynamics. So, basically we have to see that how the melt will flow and what would be the viscosity and for how long the material would remain viscous after how much time the solidification process would start, how the flow, the solidification, the cooling all these points have to be taken into account when we are talking about the polymer melts. So, the second point is the development of a realistic fluid dynamics that how the fluid would behave when it is flowing in the mold cavity or it is flowing in the process and different processes would require different fluidity and different viscosity and this fluid dynamics has to be understood properly when we are going to talk about the different processes which are used for processing of plastics. The last point on your screen is the molecular orientation formed during polymerization that is also very very important because this would dictate the final properties of the product or the plastic which has been formed by any of the processes. So, basically when we are talking about the processing we have to first understand the basic behavior of the polymer that what is the structure, what is the molecular orientation and what how the polymer would flow under different conditions of different temperature and pressure. Sometimes in some of the processing techniques we will see that the, the polymer will flow at a elevated temperature and as well as at a applied pressure. So, when the pressure is also acting, the temperature is also high, how the polymer melt would behave. So, all these things need to be understood, but as our focus is on the processing of non-metals, we will not go into the detail of these aspects, but yes these aspects are important when we want to do research in the area of developing some of the new processes for some of the advanced polymers. So, we need to understand all these points, but our focus primarily would be to understand that what are the processes which have already been developed, what are the process details, what are the important points to be taken care of when we are processing any plastic or a polymer with that particular process, what are the application areas of that process, what are the advantages and limitations of that particular process. But certainly when we are talking about any process we should have all these things in our mind that we should understand the chemical structure of the polymer, we should understand the flow behavior of the polymer, we should understand the molecular orientation of the polymer after it has been formed into the desired product. So, these are important points we should which we should be keeping in our mind when we are discussing the processing of plastics. Now, another important aspect are the mechanical properties of the plastics. So, on your screen you can see the stress strain behavior of the plastics. So, we can see on x axis we have strain, on y axis we have stress. So, when the load is applied we can see the necking takes place then the plastic deformation takes place and finally, the fracture takes place. Now, this is specific to one particular type of plastic as you can see if you remember in lecture number 1 we have seen the properties of the thermoplastics and the thermosets. Now, a question can be asked that this particular stress strain behavior is for a thermoplastic or for a thermoset. So, if you remember thermosets have a brittle failure. So, therefore, this particular stress strain behavior would be exhibited by the thermoplastics because they have the necking and the plastic deformation taking place when they are loaded under different conditions. So, this particular stress strain behavior is 
representative of a thermoplastic material in which when we apply the load at the failure point first the necking will take place the plastic deformation will take place there would be uh, it would take lot of strain that is there would be change in length as compared to the original length and finally the fracture would take place but in case of the other materials that is the other category of plastics which are called thermosets which have a brittle failure when they are loaded they may not undergo necking and plastic deformation and a sudden brittle failure or fracture of the component made up of thermosets may take place. So, these are important things the stress strain behavior of thermosets and thermoplastics should be known to us when we are going to talk about the processing aspects of plastics. Why? Because in certain aspects we may be getting a final product which has which is going to undergo certain type of loads. So, if it is a thermo set and a load is acting during the processing stage only after it has been formed into a solid product there are chances that the brittle failure may take place. Whereas, in case of a thermoplastic even if it has been formed a uh, some amount of load is acting the failure the chances of catastrophic or brittle failure are less in compare as compared to the thermo sets. So, they, these are the things which need to be understood when we are talking about the processing aspects of plastics. So, one important point is note, uh, noteworthy here that the thermoplastics will behave differently as compared to the thermosets when they are loaded under tensile loading as is quite evident from this graph which is there on the screen that is the stress strain diagram. Secondly, the flexural strength of plastics varies from 40 to 175. This is just a representative data. It may vary because so many different types of polymers are being developed these days. But the flexural strength may vary from 40 to 175 megapascal. Now, coming on to the failure. So, failure of thermosets under fatigue loading. Now, the polymers that we are processing can be subjected to different types of loading. So, we can have tensile loading, there can be compressive loading, it can be a cyclic loading, it can be a flexural loading. So, the type of plastics that we are processing may be subjected to different types of loading environments. So, under different loading environments, the different types of polymers would behave differently. So, this is one particular case in which the failure of thermosets under fatigue loading is being discussed. So, when the thermosets will be subjected to fatigue loading that is cyclic loading, the failure of thermosets under fatigue loading is brittle in nature which I have already told that if we load them in tensile loading environment also there also we will see that brittle failure of the specimen of thermoset would take place. Similarly, in case of fatigue loading also failure of thermosets under fatigue loading is brittle in nature. But in case of thermoplastics because the two materials are different that we have understood in our lecture number 1 also. In case of thermoplastic failures occur failure occur sorry due to initiation of crack and crack propagation. So, under fatigue loading when the cyclic load is acting on a thermoplastic there may be chances of formation of a crack and under repeated cyclic load this crack may propagate forming a bigger crack leading to a catastrophic failure of a thermoplastic, but it would not be a sudden failure or a brittle failure as in case of a thermoset. So, we have seen that if we are loading a polymer under tensile loading how the stress strain behavior would be coming. Under fatigue loading thermosets will have a brittle failure whereas thermoplastics would certainly fail by taking some time to failure first a crack will appear the crack will propagate and finally, this crack may merge with some other cracks or a catastrophic failure may take place. The fatigue strength of plastics this is another representative data which may be uh, wide quite the range may be quite wide or sometimes it may be on the lower or higher side also, but this just gives an idea that what are the number of cycles to failure for different types of plastics. So, this is a range which is given. So, the fatigue strength of plastics may be in the range of 10 to the power 5 to 10 to the power 7 number of cycles to failure at room temperature. Important point to note is that this particular data is for room temperature and if the fatigue loading is acting on any polymer at an elevated temperature certainly the number of cycles to failure would change and if it is being done under cry 
cryogenic conditions or at very low temperatures, again these number of cycles to failure may change. But here our point is to just have an idea that a large number of cycle to failure may be subject, may be taken by any plastic before it finally fails. So, again I am reading the second point on the screen that the fatigue strength of plastics may be in the range of 10 to the power 5 to 10 to the power 7 number of cycles to failure at room temperature. And this figures may change depending upon the requirements or the conditions and environment under which the fatigue loading or testing is being done. Another important property is the creep property. So, on your screen you can see the molecular weight of the polymer affects the creep behavior. So, creep basically is a combined type of loading in which a mechanical as well as a temperature load is being acting on the specimen or on the material of which we are investigating or studying the creep behavior. So, the molecular weight of the polymer affects the creep behavior. Now, if you see that so all these things are interrelated in lecture number 1 we have seen the structures different types of structures and we have seen that there are different types of isomers also. So, at chemical level there are few differentiation in different types of polymers and then different types of molecular structures are there the monomers are arranged in a different or a specific pattern in different types of polymers. So, that arrangement of monomers, the cross linking among the monomer chains, all these things are affecting the mechanical properties and the mechanical properties would subsequently affect the processing also. So, once the polymer is being made or once the plastic product has been made, many of the properties or we can say all of the properties of the final plastic product would be depending upon all these levels of all these levels of understanding that is the chemical level of understanding, the mechanical properties of the polymer and finally, the final properties of the product. So, all these things are interrelated, there is nothing which is existing independently. So, again on in this particular slide you can see the molecular weight of the polymer affects the creep behavior. So, that is one important point and the creep behavior depends on the molecular weight in a particular fashion which is there on the screen. On increasing the molecular weight, the plastics become more creep resistant. So, higher molecular weight, more creep resistance. So, once we are thinking of a particular product that will be coming under temperature loading also and mechanical loading also, we should think of that what type of polymer we should select for this particular application because it is constantly coming under creep loading. So, this particular point gives us an idea that increasing the molecular weight, plastics become more creep resistant, which means that high molecular weight can be chosen, but there would be certain other conditions which also have to be satisfied. It cannot be a unilateral or single direction decision, but there can be many other conditions which would be acting on the uh, this particular selection criteria or this particular selection decision which would be many other criteria would be affecting this decision. So, basically we will see that what are the various factors which should be taken into account when we are selecting a particular material for a particular product application that would be covered in another lecture. But important point to note in this particular slide is that the molecular weight of the polymer affects its creep behavior and on increasing the molecular weight. the material becomes or the plastic becomes creep resistant. So, for creep resistant applications we should choose polymers which have high molecular weight. So, that is one relating the properties of the polymer with the mechanical property and then the mechanical property would finally, be related to the application for which the polymer is being used and the creep behavior depends upon the following factors. Now, these are the other factors which have to be taken into account when we are discussing the creep behavior of the polymers. So, what are these factors? These are the types of plastic or the type of polymer that we are using, load applied and the temperature and time. 
so there are three four important points which will dictate the creep behavior of any plastic so on your screen you can see the nature or type of the polymer that is one the load applied the temperature and the time for which the temperature and the load are acting on the polymer will dictate the creep behavior of the polymer so we can see the different mechanical properties are there. We have seen the stress strain behavior of a thermoplastic. We have seen how the brittle failure of the thermoset would take place. We have seen the fatigue strength is dependent upon the properties of the polymer. And we have seen under fatigue loading how thermoplastics would fail, how thermosets would fail. And in this particular slide, we are trying to understand the creep behavior, that the creep behavior is dependent upon the molecular weight of the polymer. So, the mechanical properties can be correlated with the basic characteristics or basic physical and chemical properties of the polymers. So, basic physical and chemical properties of the polymer dictate the mechanical properties or they have an influence on the mechanical properties of the polymers. And finally, these mechanical properties of the polymers are important to us when we are going to make the products out of these polymers and these products will be used for different applications which we have seen in the last class. We have seen two slides in which we have seen what are the important applications of thermosets and what are the important applications of thermo plastics. So, till now we have tried to understand the basics of the polymers and we have tried to understand that how the properties are affected by the chemical and the physical properties or the how the mechanical properties are affected by the physical and the chemical properties. With this we come to the end of the basic discussion about the plastics. We have seen again and again I am revising the same thing that what was our focus. Our focus was primarily to understand that or revise what are thermosets and thermoplastics because we have not gone into that much detail about the basic nature of thermosets and thermo. We have not understood too much in too much depth that how the thermosets and thermoplastics uh, are formed or maybe the basic chemical nature of the thermosets and thermoplastics. But we have tried to understand them from the application point of view that how they behave, what are the various properties or what are the various mechanical properties of thermosets and thermoplastics. We have tried to see the difference between the two. We have tried to see that what are the various types of structures like the linear structure, branch structure. Uh, cross linked structure, network structure, we have tried to see what are the isomer, different types of isomers, cis and trans. So, th all these things we have tried to just revise in lecture number 1. And today we have seen that how the physical and chemical properties or the basic properties of the polymers affect the mechanical properties. And we have just taken the revision of few uh, properties only, there can be other mechanical properties also like hardness which we have not discussed. We have just seen a typical stress strain behavior for a thermoplastic. We have seen that under fatigue loading how the polymers or the plastics would fail. We have tried to understand the creep behavior because the one of the important point regarding the use of plastics is the temp high temperature applications and when the temperature and load both are acting on the polymer then the creep type of loading is there and under creep loading how the material behaves or what factors should be taken into account in order to have a good uh, response of the plastic under different types of conditions that we have tried to understand. So, that was all that we have to revise before going or taking a plunge into the processing of plastics because now we are going to discuss the various processing techniques for these plastics which we are going to cover in our subsequent lectures. So, processing of plastics now we are going to start the basic introduction about the plastics is now over. So, processing of plastics on your screen if you remember in lecture 1 the very first slide we have seen that plastics derive their name from the word plasticose which means that it is easy to mold and shape. So, processing of plastics is not too uh, we can say difficult or a complicated process, but yes it is easier said than done. There are so many control variables that have to be taken into account and if you remember the very first slide today, we have to take into account the chemical nature and the flow behavior of the polymers when we are talking of the processing of plastics. So, basically 
although from the word from which the plastic has been derived it means easy to mold and shape but still we need to understand that what are the complications what are the problem areas what are the issues what are the challenges in the various processing techniques related to the processing of plastics so now onward our discussion would be focusing on primarily on the processing of plastic so whatever terms would be used related to the basic raw material or the structure we have already covered in lecture number 1 and in the beginning of today's lecture so now our focus would primarily would be on processing of plastics so plastic materials are synthetic and semi synthetic organic solid and can be easily processed again and again the word easily is coming but when we will see the details of the various processes which are used for processing of plastic we would see that there are many control variables which have to be optimized in order to make a good quality product out of plastics so the processing stages of plastics may be now this is just giving an overview or the outline that what are the various stages and these stages would be different in different processes and we would be seeing the different types of processes in our series of lectures on processing of plastics so what are the various broad steps or broad category of steps that would be followed in converting any raw material which is a plastic material into a final product so the various stages would be heating we would be heating the raw material that is any polymer or any plastic it would be forming forming means we would be converting it into the desired shape now suppose we want to make a pen so the polymer would be melted and it would be made in the form of a pen or formed in the form of a pen now suppose i want to make a plastic bucket the raw material would be in the form of a plastic it would be heated and it would be deformed into the shape of a bucket suppose i want to make a mug the mug would be formed given the shape of a mug by a heating the raw material that is a plastic and converting it or forming it into the desired shape so different examples can be given for processing of plastics but the primary stages are heating of the raw material forming means giving the desired shape to the raw material and finally allowing it to cool to that particular desired shape and that shape can be given by a mold now what is a mold that we would be seeing in the subsequent lecture basically the processes are fairly simple heating the raw material second stage is giving the raw material a particular shape and final stage is allowing the raw material to cool inside the mold cavity or the mold or the die so that we get the desired shape or the desired product out of a raw material which in this particular module is a plastic material so this particular thing can be done on a continuous scale or in a repeated cycle so this means the product can be coming out continuously or it can be coming out in a cyclic fashion maybe 60 parts per minute or it can be 100 parts per hour or it can be 200 parts per day so depending upon the production rate we can get discrete number of products also or these can be continuous products also but the technical definition of processing or general terms in terms of processing would be heating of the raw material giving it a desired shape which can be called as forming and finally cooling to the desired shape that is the shape of the final product so in most of the processes that we would be covering in processing of plastics the basic stages would be same that is heating second stage is forming and third stage is cooling so we can say heating h second is forming f and cooling c h f and c heating forming and cooling so we should keep these three words in mind that is h f and c first the raw material would be heated then it will be formed and finally it would be cooling to the desired shape and if you remember in our series of lectures in another module in which we have seen the forming of glass there also the steps were quite similar but there were few additional steps involved also so we will not go into details of glass forming in this particular lecture but we just trying to draw an analogy between the forming of glasses and the forming of plastics again the stages are nearly same that is hf and c heating 
forming and finally cooling. The manufacture process of or the manufacturing process of plastic products depends upon the shape of the final product and the types of the plastic materials being used. So, the processing techniques broadly can be classified on the basis of two important criteria. The two important criteria are there on your slide. Now, what are these two criteria? Let us take one criteria at a time. Criteria number one, the shape of the final product. Now, we can have a very huge product, we can have a very discrete and a small product. It can be a very complicated product, it can be a very simple product. So, we can depending upon the shape and the size of the product, different processes can be there for processing of plastics. Second criteria is the type of the plastic material being used. That is the plastic material may be a thermoset or it may be a thermo plastic. Now, for thermosets because of the basic differences in the thermosets and thermoplastic, the processing techniques may also vary. So, that that is why we have taken lecture number 1 on thermosets and thermoplastics. Why? Because we needed, we need to understand that what are the basic differences between the two. So, the two criteria that are very, very important in order to differentiate between the processing of plastics is that the shape and size of the product is one criteria on the basis of which the processes will be differentiated or classified and the type of the raw material that we are using is another criteria on the basis of which the processes would be classified. Now, without going into the details of the classification process, we have just listed down all the processes which can be used for processing of plastics. There can be other processes also, the list is not complete, there can be other processes which can be used, but certainly these are some of the important processes which can be used for processing of plastics. On your screen, you can just read different types of processes which are used. So, different types of processing techniques for plastics are casting, extrusion, thermoforming, injection molding, compression molding, rotational molding, blow molding, transfer molding and there can be other processes also. So, in our series of lectures as I have already told that this particular lecture is being delivered under the course processing of non-metals and in processing of non-metals this particular module is focusing on processing of plastics and in this particular module we have to engage seven different lectures and this is the lecture number two. Now, in the subsequent five lectures our focus would primarily be on understanding the basic theory about these processes. We will try to understand them with the help of the diagrams and we will try to see the different animations that how the process actually works, how the raw material is converted into the final product. Our focus would be on what type of materials or what type of plastics or which type of plastics can be processed by these processes individually how the process actually happens or takes place, what are the important control variables, what are the important decisions that have to be taken for a particular process, what are the important precautions, what are the advantages of a particular process, what are the disadvantages of a particular process or the limitations of a particular process and finally, what are the types of products that can be made by that process and finally, we will see what are the various application areas for products made by the different processes. So, different types of processing techniques for plastics are shown on your screen. So, we can see that their list is quite long and we have to cover most of these processes in our subsequent lectures. Now, processing techniques of thermoplastics and thermosets, we have already seen that the two categories of plastics are there and the processes or the processing requirements for the both have certain specific, we can say needs or certain specific requirements. So, we have to see that which particular process can be used for which particular material. So, thermoplastics can be processed by heating up to the glass transition temperature and formed into the desired shape with the application of pressure. So, we can see in these three lines 
two important variables that are coming into picture. Variable, variable number one is the heat, that is the heating has to be done. Variable number two is the pressure. Now, the raw material has to be heated to a particular temperature and then at that particular temperature sometimes the pressure may be required to be applied in order to give a shape to the final product. So, thermoplastics can be processed by heating up to a glass transition temperature and formed into the desired shape. Now, H heating uh, that is already there, forming F formed into the desired shape with the application of pressure. Examples are thermoforming, compression molding and extrusion process. So, two or three examples of the processes are also given, but again from this particular slide our ongoing discussion is further getting substantiated that the process involved two or three common steps that are heating the raw material and deforming or forming it into the desired shape under the application of pressure. Again we will see for thermosets, thermosets can be processed into two steps. First is it can be melted and then poured into the mold to make a desired shape. For example, casting, transfer molding and injection molding. So, in case of thermosets we can see we can melt them, we can bring them into a liquid state and then this, this liquid can flow into the mold. Now, depending upon the shape of the mold we would be able to generate the final shape of the product. Now, final shape of the product would be adhering to the shape of the mold that we would try to understand in one of the process that we are going to cover today in today's lecture that is casting that we have a mold, we have a raw material, raw material is melted and it is poured into the mold and it the final product is according to the shape of the mold or the raw material takes the shape of the mold. Now, this is one of the simplest process which is used for processing of plastics. Now, casting is the process of processing of plastic part into a in a mold. So, basically it is a process in which a plastic part is made in a mold. Now, we have to first what are the requirements? The requirements are we should have a furnace or we should have a equipment in which we can melt the plastic that is first requirement. Second requirement is that we should have a mold. The mold should be of the shape of the final product. So, we will see with the help of a diagram that how a typical mold can look like, but here we have to melt the plastic and we have to pour that molten plastic into the mold. The plastic material is melted and it is poured into the mold cavity that is point number 2 on your screen. So, point number 1 casting is the process of processing a plastic part in a mold. So, the final processing would be done in the mold that is one of the prerequisite, mold is a prerequisite for the casting process. Second is plastic material is melted and it is poured into the mold cavity that is second important point. Third is as the plastic cools it will solidify into the desired shape and the part is ejected. Again the H F C is coming into picture that is the heating plastic material is melted it means it is heated and it is poured into the mold cavity and the plastic will take the shape of the mold that is it is getting formed the word F is the alphabet F forming according to the shape of the mold and finally cooling into the desired shape as the plastic cools it will solidify into the desired shape. So, heating forming that is giving a shape and finally cooling into the desired shape. So, this is again the basic processing steps involved in processing of plastic in casting also the same steps are being followed. On your screen you can see a very simple diagram this is a molten plastic grey color and it is being poured into the mold this is the mold. The molten plastic is being poured into the mold the final product that will come out will be according to the shape of this mold. So, most simple process, we have a plastic, we are melting it, the molten plastic is being poured into the mold, the final shape of the product would depend upon the shape of the mold. 
Now, what are the important process parameters that have to be taken into account? That is the melting temperature of the plastic that has to be taken into account when we are selecting a particular plastic for a particular application, we should take into account that at what temperature this particular plastic is going to melt. That is one important point to be taken care of. Second important point to be taken care of is the pouring temperature that at what temperature we are going to pour the material and finally, how it will be allowed to cool that it would be allowed to cool at room temperature or at a slightly elevated temperature or at a lower temperature. So, that is these are the three important points that have to be taken into account that is at what temperature the plastic will melt or what is the melting temperature of the plastic, the pouring temperature and the cooling rate at the rate at which the cooling will take place. Now, what are the materials used in the casting process? The thermosets such as polyesters, urethanes, phenolics and epoxy and certain thermoplastic materials like acrylics and nylons can be used for casting process. This pro particular process can be used to cast a wide variety of plastics into the desired shapes. A large type of plastics can be converted into the final shape of the mold using the casting process. Now, what are the advantages of the casting process? We can say we the only requirement are that we should have a equipment to melt the plastic that is first requirement. Second requirement is a mold which will adhere to the shape of the final product. So, these are the two important requirements. So, the initial investment cost is low for the casting process. Flexible parts can be made that is another thing because with a mold can be flexible different types of parts can be made. Dimensional stability is good because the final shape would be coming according to the shape of the mold. Now, what can be the disadvantages? It is labor intensive because like it has been compared with one of the processes which would be, we would be covering in our subsequent lectures that is injection molding. It is more labor intensive. What does that mean? So, labor intensive means it is a manual process. Most of the time this melting and pouring can be done has to be done manually and complex shapes cannot be produced because the mold also has got its limitation and if we make a very complex mold, the molten plastic may not be able to reach each and every corner or cross section of the mold. So, the complexity of the mold is also a limitation in case of the casting process, but certainly the casting process has got its own advantages and it is a very simple process to give shape to the plastic parts. Now, what are the important application areas of the casting process? On your screen you can see it is used to produce customized toys like designer toys. Sometime we want to give a very specific shape to a particular toy, we can make a mold of that toy, melt the plastic and pour it into that mold and we would be able to get a very customized or very good quality toy. We can make garage kits, ball jointed dolls can be made, sheets, wheels can be made. Either individual parts or entire model of the objects like it can be used. You can see that fair, fairly intricate products can be made that is train, aircraft, boat and ship certainly toy train or toy ships can be made. So, these individual parts or entire models of these particular uh, important objects that are mentioned on the screen can be made. So, we this is a simple process, most simple process for processing of plastic parts. Subsequently, we will see what are the other important processing techniques for plastics in which we would be covering other techniques such as injection molding or thermoforming. So, with this we come to the end of today's lecture that is lecture number 2 in module number 4. So, we would just revise what we have covered in today's lecture. If you remember, we have seen that what is the general behavior of the poly melt and what are the important factors that dictate the behavior of the polymer melt, what are the important points which should be taken into account while we discuss the processing of plastics. We have seen very briefly the mechanical properties, we have seen the stress strain behavior of a thermoplastic, how the final failure would take place. We have also seen that in case of a thermoset and a thermoplastic, how the behavior would be different. We have just overviewed the fatigue 
behavior of the polymers. We have seen typical ranges of certain values of the mechanical properties related to the polymers. And finally, we have seen one of the important techniques of processing of plastics that is casting, which is one of the simple techniques of processing. We have seen that what are the important steps that are there in processing of plastics, which we have said it is heating, forming and cooling. And these are the important steps which would be followed in the other processing techniques for plastics also, which we would be covering in the subsequent slides or in the subsequent lectures. We are going to have five more lectures on processing of plastics in which we would be covering certain other techniques such as injection molding, thermoforming and certain important aspects related to some other techniques which are used for processing of plastics. Thank you.